Hello and once again it's a welcome uh, to the Real Salvation Army and our weekly meeting. We extend our fellowship this evening uh, once again with a Zoom meeting and for those who can master the technical side of things details are on the Facebook page. But if you want any further help, uh, ring me or Jason. And uh, again, we give thanks to Jason for setting this up and for the, the weekly podcasts as well. The Salvation Army has decided to change its boundaries. The boundaries of the divisions. And as from the 1st of July, Real Corps will be part of a new Wales division. And our divisional leaders will be Majors Roger and Noreen Batt. And DHQ will be just down the road in Cardiff. More details about that in the future. This week we continue our theme for self-denial but also this week we're asked to pray for those people affected by racism and, and this Sunday is recognised by all the churches in the UK as Racial Justice Sunday. The Salvation Army in the UK uh, affirms that it stands in solidarity with people around the world including our own members and employees who experience racism, both in its blatantly ugly and its more insidious forms. Our hearts are heavy and hurting because of race, the racism that infect, infects our church. And we acknowledge and confess that this is true even in parts of the Salvation Army life. We are deeply concerned by the research showing that people from the BAME groups in our territory have suffered disproportionately from the corona, coronavirus pandemic. Consequently, the Salvation Army in the UK and Ireland will intentionally seek ways to confront and fight racism wherever it is found. We will take positive action to ensure that our culture is, increase, is increasing one in which our members, our employees, service users and officers and the majority and minority ethnic origin feel included. That is respected, that they're valued and trusted and safe and have a sense of belonging. Let's pray together. Sovereign God, Lord of all, we pray once more for our troubled and divided world, so full of tension, so full of need. We pray for our world, recognizing that it is your world also, and your world first. We pray for those who strive to bring liberty, to bring a world free from religious and political persecution, from racial bigotry and ethnic cleansing, from dictatorship and oppression. Strengthen their resolve and may the evil that holds people captive be destroyed. We pray for those who strive to bring justice, a world free from exploitation and corruption, prejudice and discrimination, debt and dependence. Prosper them in their work and may the rights of all be respected. Lord, come into our broken world and grant your healing. Bring peace where there is war and love where there is hatred, reconciliation where there is division and cooperation where there is conflict, good where there is evil and wisdom where there is folly. Instill in all a willingness to engage in dialogue rather than dispute, in discussion rather than destruction. And so may your world become one at the one world that you long for it to be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Hello and welcome to the second of our films for this year's Self-Denial Appeal. This year, we're revisiting some of the people and places we've featured before. In a moment, I'm going to be talking to Nana Togo, 
Nana presented last year's films from Burkina Faso. She and her husband Andre started the Salvation Army's work there in 2016. They began as just eight Salvationists, but when we visited, there were 182 senior soldiers and 36 junior soldiers from two corps and two outposts. While we were there, we saw 20 senior soldiers and nine junior soldiers being enrolled. We saw how the Salvation Army has been helping people who were struggling. Women from the local community have learned to read and write and to sew and to dye cloth. Micro-enterprise projects mean these women now are earning enough money to send their children to school. And outreach projects mean some of the local men have started to come along on a Sunday. So I'm going to get in touch with Nana and find out how she and Andre are getting on. Hi, Captain Nana Togo. Nice to meet you. Ça va? Oui, ça va. <laughs> really good to speak to you. Um, I know your husband, Captain Andre Togo, really well. Um, I've been working yeah. with him for over a year, but I've never met you, so this is a real pleasure. How are you? How has life been? How was 2020? We are doing well. I'm doing well with my husband and uh, our two kids. Life in uh, 2020 has not been easy. It has been very challenging. But still, we thank God for his grace, which has been sufficient through this uh, difficult time. Can I call you Nana or Captain Nana? Please go ahead. Nana, I understand you and, and, and Andre, you have a new appointment. Have you moved from Burkina Faso now? Yeah, we are in Mali. We are the currently regional secretaries. I'm the regional secretary for women ministry and Andre the regional secretary. But both we have got an additional appointment, co-officers of uh, ACID Mil. How has the pandemic uh, affected the Ministry of the Salvation Army in the region? Because we, when we read the statistics for Burkina Faso and Mali, the, the, the death count is relatively low, but the economic impact seem to be seems from what you're saying is quite large is that correct it is correct you know the situation usually it is not easy in africa particularly in Burkina faso where we have been seeing extreme poverty mm. and when the, this pandemic of covid 19 came the situation became western as well in mali you know people don't have access to this elementary need, and it is very difficult. Churches as well have been affected, even schools in all areas. Everybody is affected by this pandemic. The community project we have been uh, working with uh, in Burkina Faso, there were so many with ladies. Most of them, sorry, have been stopped also because of this pandemic pandemic issue like juice production, soap making. But uh, we also thank God through the Salvation Army always, we manage to still meet some needs of the people and we thank God for that. One of the things we've been able to partner with the Mali region on this year is to fund um, uh, with you a project vehicle. Can you tell us the impact the project vehicle has had? We have got so many remote areas in Mali that it wasn't easy at all. Mm. But now we are really relieved from that burden of not being able to, to, to visit our communities. At any time, the vehicle is moving, even from Mali to Burkina Faso, doing the community work. We are really grateful for that. And, um, and what about uh, you, Nana? What have you been learning from 2020 in your own life? People always thought that, you know, to show love to each other, we just have to be together, sit together, fellowship together. And through this coronavirus, I have learned that it is not necessary, it is not an obligation to be physically present, you know, to demonstrate your love. Even though we can be a, a absent physically but in mind through practical actions still 
we keep that bound, you know, of humanity we share together. Thanks for your inspiration to us in the United Kingdom and Republic of Ireland. And um, God bless you. Okay, thank you very much to you too, Benjamin. And uh, be assured of how our prayer support. We are praying for you day and night. You are in our mind and uh, thought in our heart. May the Lord keep on visiting you individually and as a territory as well. Thanks so much. Bye, Nana. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> In next week's film, I'll be talking to Richard Bradbury, who's serving in Bangladesh. Okay. 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 21. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation of for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also, also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this, we know that we abide in him and he in us because the Father has sent his Son to be the Saviour of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love and whoever abides in love abides in God and God abides in him. By this is love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment, because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar, for he does not, who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. It's a beautiful reading uh, from the, the first letter of John. And we're going to look at this passage of scripture over the next few weeks. John wrote this letter to warn Christians about the false teachers and to encourage them to grow in their faith and knowledge of Christ. John, of course, wrote from authority as he had been with Jesus before his death. He saw Jesus heal the sick, transform lives. He showed love in action. Of course, God is the source of our love and everything Jesus did in his life was supremely loving. And that's what we need to do in, in our lives. Reflect God's love in all our actions. I heard a lovely illustration about this. And there's a, uh, a man called Doug Nicholas went to India to be a missionary there. But while he was just starting to study the language, he became infected with tuberculosis. And in 1967, he had to put, be put into a sanitarium. It was not a very good place to be. It was not very clean and conditions were difficult because there were so many sick people there. But Doug decided to do the best he could in that situation. So he took a bunch of Christian books and tracts and tried to witness to others in the sanitarium. When he tried to pass out tracts, they were, were rejected. No one wanted them. He tried to hand out books, but no one would take them. 
He tried to witness, but he was handicapped because of his inability to communicate in their language. And he was discouraged. Here he was. Because of his illness, he would not be there. He would be there for quite a, a long time. But it seemed like the work that he'd been sent to do would not be done because no one would listen to him. Because of his tuberculosis, every night at about two o'clock he would wake up with a chronic coughing fit that just wouldn't seem to go away. And one night when he awoke, he noticed across the aisle an old man trying to get out of bed. He said the man would roll himself up into a little ball and, and teeter backwards and forwards to get the momentum to get up and stand on his feet. But he just couldn't do it. He was too weak. Finally, after several attempts, the old man laid back and wept. The next morning, Doug understood why the man was weeping. He was trying to get up to go to the bathroom and didn't have enough strength to do that. So his bed was a mess and there was a smell in the air. The other patients made fun of the old man. The nurses came to clean up his bed and they weren't kind to him either. In fact, one of them even slapped him on the face. Doug said that the old man just lay there and cried. The next night, about two o'clock, Doug started coughing again. He looked across the way and there was an old man trying to get out of the bed once more. I really didn't know what to do, Doug said, but somehow I managed to get up and walk across the aisle and I helped the old man stand up. But he was too weak to walk, so, so Doug took him in his arms and carried him like a baby. He was so light that it wasn't a difficult task. Took him to the bathroom, which was nothing more than a dirty hole in the floor. He stood behind him, cradled, cradled him in his arms and took care of him as he took care of himself. Then he carried him back to his bed and laid him down. And as, I, and as he turned to leave and reach up, he grabbed a face and pulled me close and kissed me on the cheek and said, what I think was thank you. Doug said the, mo the next morning there were patients waiting when I awoke and they asked about if about the tracks, about the books. Others had questions about the, the, the God that I worshipped. Doug says that the next few weeks he gave out all the literature that he had bought and many of the doctors and nurses and patients of the sanitarium came to know Jesus as their Lord and Saviour too. He said, now, what do I do? <laughs> I didn't do anything. I didn't preach a sermon. Couldn't even communicate in their language. He just showed them love. Love is a real action. It's not a feeling. Today, of course, is Valentine's Day, when many people will be trying to show their, their love. It might be in a material way. But real love is an action. It produces selfless, sacrificial giving. The greatest act of love anyone can do is to give himself or herself to others. The Christians must show their love to others. It should be a natural thing to do in this time of self-denial. And we can show that love in our giving to, to help others. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to love. And God's love always involves a choice and an action. And our love should always be like this. Let us pray for the International Salvation Army. Pray for those who are suffering in the world through conflict, violence, poverty, natural disasters, and who lack basic necessities such as clean water, food, and shelter. Pray for those who struggle to find acceptance in their own communities due to prejudice or ignorance. Pray for Christian brothers and sisters enduring civil conflict, persecution, poverty and injustice as they seek to serve and use their gifts to build community and care for others. Pray that we can support our family of God in regular prayer and financial support. Pray for officers, leaders and missionaries around the world particularly those ministering to people in remote areas, that they will be devoted to the gospel 
and sharing the good news of Jesus. Amen.